Welcome to How To, a quality digest series for quality control and quality assurance specialists who need quick instruction on how to get something done. In this episode, we look at CPK. What is a process capability index or CPK and how do you use it? When do you use it? Here to tell us about CPK is Derek Benson of PQ Systems. Okay, Derek, so uh, explain to us what is CPK and why does it matter? Why should we care about it? Yeah, that's a great question, Dirk. Uh, we have learned that CPK can sometimes be a challenge to wrap your head around. Sp starting formally, CPK is a metric or a statistic that helps you determine if your existing process is capable of meeting your customer's requirements. Now, a little bit less formally, what does that really mean? Um, think of CPK as a universal language for customers and suppliers of all shapes and sizes to communicate with each other about how things are going. Um, in other words, the health of the processes. Now, this is all shapes and sizes, so it doesn't matter if you're you know, in the food and beverage industry or automotive manufacturing aerospace. It's a unitless measure. Uh, that way, any customer and any supplier can chat with each other. Now, think of it a lot like a report card. Uh, through grade school, we have a pretty good understanding about the differences between achieving an A and a C or a D and an F. Now, CPK is very similar. It's up for the customer to determine what that good grade is. Sometimes it's a CPK of greater than one. Oftentimes, it's greater than 1.5. And is this, is this, is this just a, a numeric uh, indication or is it a visual indication, both? What, what are we talking about here? What, what do we actually see when, we, when you calculate a CPK? We have found that uh, people like to consider it both or, or, or help to, to see the visual indication on a histogram of a CPK, uh, but also th there's some background behind that. Uh, we've created an analogy that, that we think might help with, with better understanding uh, using sports of all things. Um, so we're going to consider a field goal kicker in an American football team, and we're trying to decide which field goal kicker would be the best for our fantasy team. Um, so what we're going to have our kicker do is kick 100 balls in a row, and um, we want to determine the, let's call it the width of the process. In other words, how far from the furthest left kick was our kicker from the furthest right kick? And we would consider that the width of the process or his variation. Now, where are we going with that? Um, to determine a CPK for this particular unique process, we first have to determine a what's called the CP, which would be the width of the field goal posts, in other words, you know, how wide from one upright to the other, uh, divided by the width of our actual kicker's process. That tells us how capable the process or the kicker could be of making field goals. Um, and as you can see here on the screen, we have an example to illustrate that. Uh, we're looking at the variation of a football as kicked by our kicker, and the CP here is 24. That means a, a very great CP, anything greater than one, generally means that the width of our process or the kicker's variation is far less than the width of the field goal posts. Now, where CP falls down and where CPK picks it back up is it tells us, you know, are we actually making these kicks or not? In our illustration, we see that with field goal posts, we are centered. Now, our CPK is very high because our process width um, is very small and we're also very accurate as well. We're precise and accurate, high CPK, high CP, a good, score, a good, good grade. In our second example here, we're off-centered a little bit. Uh, we're still making some field goals, but we're, our average is leaning towards the left upright. We are going to be kicking a few balls outside of our uh, field goal posts and therefore our CPK is a little bit smaller. And finally, in the last example, our average is completely outside of the field goal posts. Now notice our CP is still the same. We still have a very consistent or precise process. The problem is that this process isn't centered. We're not making very many field goals. We get a score of an F, a low CPK, probably not the best individual for our fantasy team. If I understand this correctly then, if you're going to use CPK as an indication in, in, this, in this example of how, let's say, how good the kicker is, it seems to me this also implies that he, this kicker also has to be consistent, right? I mean, if you had a kicker that was all over the place, you couldn't really calculate CPK, right? It, it's kind of based on, uh, on the kicker kicking on average a certain way, right? 
You are absolutely correct. So one assumption that we made was that we had a consistent or a predictable process to begin with. Um, at PQ, we like to refer to this as SBC instead of SPC, meaning stability before capability. So as long as you have a consistent process, you've reviewed a control chart and have a pretty good idea that you can predict the future, you can therefore make some conclusions with these capability indices. Okay, perfect. Well, Derek, thanks for explaining uh, CPK to us uh, this morning. Yeah, thanks for having me, Derek. Okay, no problem.